going, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Ruffled Rowlett, and welcome back to a brand new video, guys. Today we got ourselves some rumors and Pokemon theories to talk about. So if you guys are ready, let's get started with the first one. Now, this first one is a rumor from 4chan, which I thought we'd take a look at. Of course, you guys know the 4chan rumors tend to be fake, but there's always a chance they could be real, so it's always worthwhile to take a look at. So this post says the following information. Legends EA details from Anonymous. Uh, the current projected release date is spring 2025 with a cross-gen release. Now, cross-gen would imply it being released on Nintendo Switch as well as other consoles, but um, that's pretty much where it like uh, kind of ends at. Like that's pretty much where it's at right now uh, with this. It's just saying that it's going to be in uh, in spring of 2025. That's pretty much all I can put into regards to that. But moving on though, the next thing says info uh, blowout and gameplay footage won't happen until Switch Two is revealed. That uh, the Switch Two, uh, <laughs> the rumored reveal for it is originally was supposed to be March. That's what they were talking about. But I think now the Riddlers and people are saying that we maybe shouldn't even expect it until possibly, this again, just possibly, shouldn't expect it until June, uh, which is a long time away. But June is a period when Nintendo does do Nintendo Directs. And we are, of course, expecting to see the actual announcement and reveal of this console uh, sometime around then. So... That's pretty much where I in regards to that. Now, the game will be pr promoted mostly uh, for the new console, but you can still play on the current ones like Breath of the Wild with the Wii U. Okay, doesn't sound that far-fetched, but a bit odd. It would be the first time a Pokemon game is actually cross-gen. Should be pretty crazy. Um, moving on, though, it says that Monolith is more heavily involved compared to PLA. So apparently Monolith Soft is involved. Now, I think there was a rumor that Monolith Soft was involved with Legends Arceus, but I don't know if that was actually confirmed. I don't know if it's actually confirmed that Monolith was involved. Um, I don't remember. Like, I think... That might have been just a rumored thing. It's, it's, I don't think it was ever confirmed necessarily. But if it was, you guys can always correct me in the comment section down below because I appreciate when you guys do do that. Um, however, moving on, it says that story details are still floaty. Uh, at the beginning, Zygarde destroys future Lumios because the excessive advance of technology has led mankind to neglect nature and Pokemon well-being. Uh, the Flare Company sets up a simulation uh, and tasks you to analyze how X and Y Lumios, because it's struck the balance between uh, tech and Pokemon well-being. Uh, okay, so basically the story would be of Zygarde's destruction of future Lumios because of excessive advances of technology, which then you have to, I guess, work against stopping that? Uh, it's a bit weird. Uh, Lumios districts will function as open areas with boundaries. Um... So that actually sounds about right. I would kind of expect something like that. And those, those I guess, areas, um, those open areas with boundaries, I guess would work similar to the, like they did in Legends Arceus. And that's where we would find a bunch of Pokemon. But it'd still be a city of sorts. Now, it's much more battle-focused than catching. Abilities are back, but some PLA unique changes remain, which is a good thing. I would love if that is still the case. That would honestly be fantastic. However, next up is the second thing, which is Chikorita, Piplup, and Scorebunny as starters. Frankly... Sounds pretty solid to me, okay? I'm totally on board for that. I think it sounds like a solid combination of starters. Um, again, what do you guys think about this? Chikorita, Piplop, and Score Bunny. I do wonder if they would have new evolution forms or if they would have new Megas. That would be pretty fun. Uh, but I guess we'd have to wait and see. But yeah, kind of a cool combo of starters. Not gonna lie. I kind of like them. But that's that. Let's move on to the next thing. So again, I'd love to know what you guys think about this rumor in the comment section down below. This is the first rumor we take a look at. Next up is a bit of a theory from none else than Mordecai. Now, Mordecai is a really awesome theorist, and he put together this theory saying, yo, hold up. There's something he, I've noticed. And if you look right here in his original post, he was talking about specifically um, these masks, right? So he's talking about these things that you wore, or they had like on uh, characters in, um, sorry, not that you wore, but the characters had in uh, X and Y. And he says, although I've never, uh, I will never forgive uh, Essentia for kicking Emma's Esper like this, I uh, do have to wonder if um, Zerosic of Team Flare will have some part in uh, playing, uh, you know, in part in making the tech for Legend ZA, the way he made the expansion suit in the X and Y post game. So, of course, he's talking about this. After downfall of Team Flare, uh, Zerosic goes into the hiding and begins conducting a project of his own, extracting Looker's attention. He sets up a lab in the secret floor of Lysander's lab complex and posts a notice in Lysander's cafe looking for part time employees, hiring the Lumios gang for security and Emma as his test subject. He creates a device called the expansion suit, which can augment a human subject in a number of ways, including giving them superhuman reflexes, shape-shifting powers, and the ability to hack and control Pokeballs. After teaching Emma how to, be, how to be a trainer and loaning her his Pokemon, Zerozik advances his experiment to the next stage, in which he remote-controls the suit while Emma sleeps inside. 
unaware of what she is actually doing. This figure, dubbed Essentia, goes on a crime spree throughout Lumio City using personalities and disguises based on various trainers, classes preloaded into the expansion suit's databanks. So, this is pretty much interesting because this exact suit, and he says this, hold up, you're telling me that I posted this 11 hours ago, and tonight in the VGC, I see my opponent with Essentia mask from X and Y expansion suit from Team Flare in Sword in, Sh in Scarlet Violet. I had no clue this was obtainable in Scarlet Violet. It's giving me very much uh, a Scarlet Violet Legend ZA, or Pokemon, sorry, Legend ZA Easter egg. So yes, this was in there, which does feel like this might have been a hint. Um, this might have literally been a hint, right? Like this, this is like the vibe even I'm getting, uh, which is perfect because I'm going to put this on my uh, list of uh, multiple Pokemon uh, Easter eggs. So Essentia Suit, uh, hint for Legend ZA in Scarlet Violet, you know? Like uh, it's kind of crazy, but it actually seems pretty accurate. At least that's the way I look at it. Um, so again, what do you guys think about this? Do you think this was a hint that they left in there? Um, do you think they were hinting it with this? Like, I'd love to know your guys' opinions on it, but it is an interesting thing nonetheless. Like, I think it's very intriguing. So, let's move on to the next post. Now, we've already talked to you a little bit about this, uh, which was specifically about, like, the fact that we see this kind of... Um, I don't even know how to re refer to this as, but basically we see um, none else than Fletchling, but it's devolving, right? It's de-evolving in the trailer. It goes backwards, right? It evolves backwards. Now, somebody noticed, uh, and it's actually a really interesting little point, but somebody noticed, and I don't remember who it was, that if you watch the trailer, we also see Mega Evolution going backwards. Like, if you watch the trailer of Legends, uh, Legends like, uh, you know, Legends EA, you actually will notice that the Mega logo at the end actually does a similar reversion backwards as we see from the, uh, from the other stuff, right? Like, we of course see here you know, that Fletchling, if you don't know what I'm talking about, basically Fletchling throughout the trailer uh, de-evolves. It starts as a Talonflame, then it goes to a Fletchinder, and then a, a, a Fletchling, uh, which is really weird. It, like, basically de-evolves, goes backwards in time, which could imply that we're going to be doing some sort of time travel, but the weird thing is, when they show the, D, uh, the Mega logo, it kind of, like, goes, like, in, and then it, like, reverses backwards. Like, we see it, and then it, like, you know, fades out, or, like, backwards again. Um, which is interesting, because that could imply, possibly, that, you know, we're going to see some, some changes to Megas as well. Uh, but again, it's just a theory for now, so I'd love to know what you guys think about that. Another thing, though, speaking of that, right, uh, is specifically this post from Amar, um, Amar Yatesh, uh, on Twitter. He basically said, uh, since games always looked uh, took inspiration from anime on terms of gimmicks, could it be possible that we're going to get de-evolution based on something like technical rejuvenation and a way to gain immortality? Well, here's the thing, right? Again, they were trying to, like, make, like, you know, the eternal fillet, like, eternal life, right? Is it possible that, similar to what they did in Legends Arceus's, uh, like, the Pokemon Journeys, uh, Legends Arceus Chronicles, uh, like, anime? Like, this is, like, a whole, uh, you know, side story thing that happened. But basically, the characters all got younger, and the Pokemon got de-evolved, okay? Turned into literally Pokemon X. Like, it reversed time on all of them. Is it possible we're going to see something like this, plot-wise, showing up in this, like, you know, Legends EA game? Like, is it we going to see something similar to this being harnessed and used? I don't know, but I think it's an intriguing thing to, like, still keep in mind, though. So, I would love to know what you guys think about this. And uh, we're going to take a look at this post from PLDH Network, which I think I uh, covered a little bit in a previous video, but... He's talking about the fact that the real exciting prospect within Legends, uh, Legends was the idea of mainline Pokemon games that can experiment a lot more with the setting, style, and mechanics. I'm really stoked to see what they're following Legends Arceus with such a wild call reveal. Of course, as people have debated Unova IDs, I was hoping PLA was the template for something different, a game that takes place entirely within an urban environment. And that's again the thing, right? If you think about it, the thing with like, um, like Jubilee Village and everything in like Sinnoh that we did in like uh, Hisui, right? The whole thing with that was that it was a location that, how would you even put this? Like, it's a location that works as a hub, right? And then we go out into the Hisui region. The difference with this is we're going to be in only Lumios. We're not going to be all going outside of Lumios, but Lumios Tower in that area could be a hub of sorts. And then we go out to different zones that are part of Lumio City that could be made larger. Remember, this is a different version of Lumios, so anything is possible. And again, even here, Pokemon Legends EA's official blurb describes the game's goal as shaping the city or, or rebuilding the city into a place that belongs to both Pokemon and people. And the logo uh, connects a more industrial sci-fi looking Z to a natural A. Maybe the goal is to bring Pokemon spawns into the city. And of course, the urban focus also makes sense given that Kalos was defined by its mega evolution, which are tied to trainers. PLA shifted the emphasis away from trainer battles to surveying and battling wild Pokemon, and it makes sense for Legends EA to focus on trainer battles more in comparison, which, yes, again, connects perfectly into this ID. So I'm curious to see where they're going to be basing this off of, but that's where we are in regards to it for now. Then there was also a little bit of a uh, mini commercial that came out uh, to promote Pokemon... Um, 
like to promote Pokemon Scarlet and Violet of sorts uh, by Nintendo. And it basically featured like these uh, kids playing like, you know, these guys in school playing, uh, you know, playing Pokemon, right? Playing Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and then remembering their memories of playing like the 3DS. And there's literally X and Y there. Like there's Pokemon X version, literally. So it's like they're trying to like kind of bring up nostalgia, trying to make a connection between X and Y, um, you know, and Scarlet and Violet that you feel like a nostalgia between the two. Uh, because, yeah, I guess people who played X and Y back then, right, if you were, like, younger, uh, you might be adult now. And that's kind of crazy to think. Like, I mean, I was a kid back then, and now I'm 25. Like, if I go back in time, like, when, when you know, these games came out, I was, like, what, 16, 17, something like that? Like, I was way younger, man. <laughs> I was way younger, dude. It's been a long time since then, man. It's been, oh, geez, it's been, it's been over 10 years. It's been 11 years since then. It's been 11 years, guys. It is crazy. So I would have been like, what, 14? So it's, it's, it's nuts. But yeah, so it's interesting that they're putting these commercials out, trying to make a connection. Uh, next up, though, is a bit of a theory from Wickworks, who basically did a little bit of a theory saying, I've been thinking about it, but if players in Pokemon Legends Arceus uh, were like, um, have to create their own Pokeballs by searching for materials and crafting, could it be that Pokemon Legends EA, the players must search for materials to create Mega Stones and Keystones? So yes, that actually could be an interesting thing. The crafting in, uh, in um, you know, Legends Arceus wasn't really the best necessarily, but it was a interesting iteration. It would be intriguing to see what they would do with that now. Like, what would they do with that now? Like, how could they, like, expand upon that? Like, it's kind of like the curiosity. And I wonder if they would do a mega thing, right, when they decide to go all in on the mega side of things. But again, I digress. Next up, though. It's a little bit of a theory about the text from the trailer. You guys remember there was a text on there that said a vision of a beautiful coexistence between people and Pokemon. And while well, people have been trying to translate it into different stuff. So shout out to the TG, uh, TGS and the Code Cracking Discord server for noticing this. The exact line that talks about beautiful coexistence between people and Pokemon looks identical to the line that Rose's tablet in S Pokemon Sword and Shield had. Uh, definitely not a coincidence, but what exactly does it read? Well, basically, literally, like if you can see right here, a vision of a beautiful coexistence between people and Pokemon. And then here, it's the same text on the top here where he says it, right? Like, it's the same thing. A beautiful coexistence. An easy to understand description of energy plants. Um, and again, there, right? Like, a beautiful coexistence. Like, literally the same thing. So is it possible that this could be related to Rose? I don't know. Maybe a predecessor of his? Of like, or somebody connected to him? There are characters we've already seen that are connected to him. We have, like, his brother is literally in the Crown Tundra. Uh, one of his daughters, possibly... Could or like uh, one of the his brother's daughters could be like uh, I think Penny I think that's like one of the theories or not maybe I'm not sure if it's Penny but somebody else is connected to them um, I don't remember, don't remember though who but somebody is connected there there's like a there's like a family connection between all of them so there's a lot of family characters like there's a lot of ancestry between these characters um, moving on. Jan also says, not only that, but the exact same line also shows up in a poster on the top left of the history class. Now, I'm going to be honest, it wouldn't be uh, able to catch that. Even uh, I even went to, into the history class footage to find a shot where the uh, poster is clearer. It's the exact same line indeed. So you guys can see, same line that can be found in the trailer. Same exact kind of like shape on the top there, right? Like uh, this kind of beautiful, co the, the beautiful coexistence, right? Uh, a vision of a beautiful coexistence between people and Pokemon. Again, a lot of hints to that. You got to remember, Paldea, Kalos, and Galar are technically three three countries, right? Based on three countries that have a very long history with each other, right? The countries are, of course, the United Kingdom, France, Spain, Portugal. Now, those are four countries, of course, because they include Portugal in there. But those are four countries that have had massive impact on history and had a, a long-term connection to each other. Multiple wars, multiple conflicts, multiple everything, right? Uh, long spanning history between all of those. Many kingdoms, many, many things that have happened. It's intriguing how they've tried to connect all of them together in some way or shape, which I think is pretty cool. Um, moving on, though, it also seems that almost all Pokemon language, text, and legends are a ZA trailer. It's just reused gibberish. A little bit disappointed by it. And I think he's saying this because you can kind of see... Some of the text here looks similar to the exact same text we see right here on this board. Um, and some of the text here is also like confidential. It's the same thing we see on this one. But it also could be that literally those are the same sentences. This could be saying confidential on the shirt. Uh, this could be the same sentence being mentioned right here, which is, a uh, you know, urban redevelopment plan. Or Lumio City, maybe. Maybe that's like, maybe we're confusing which part is on the top. But I guess Lumio City is the bottom part, right? Uh, but nonetheless... I think it's intriguing, um, just to bring it up. Uh, the only part that is new is the part that's uh, supposed to read Miare City, Lumio City, and that's uh, that at least looks like they tried. So, again, 
I don't know. It is a bit intriguing, but yeah, it's it's still just something I think it's worthwhile mentioning. Um, even Soul Silver brought this up, saying a crazy find by TGS by our Discord server. I have no idea how they caught this. There was a phrase in the PLZA teaser that is the exact same phrase, not only in the Chairman Rose's scene, but also in Rayford's classroom, where they just happened to uh, be an image of the Galarian Professor of Hisui, Laventon. We don't know what this phrase means, but we probably never will. It's still a fun Easter egg, and you guys can see the actual post. Seems like the text in Collosion, uh, Collosion, a vision of a beautiful coexistence between people and Pokemon in PLZA's trailer, has either some connection to Paldea and Galar, or just a bunch of gibberish they put as a placeholder in everything history-related. So, uh, he says, this exact same text can be found in Sword and Shield, in the Chairman Rose's t-shirt being said, being said by the man himself. It's also in a poster in the history class, in Ryford's class of uh, Scarlet Violet's Uva and Naranja Academy. Um, this poster, funnily enough, is just to the left of the board, which has a timeline and a picture of what seems to be an old picture of a European town and city, Lavington, and finally modern Pokeballs. Really hope they intentionally made this because some words in Pokemon games alphabet have known meanings. So although you can't really read the poster or the rest of the uh, shirt, I guess this would be uh, this would be a Coos level riddle to figure out what they're trying to imply here. Me, pretending like this is not a game freak who probably couldn't care less about the small details. But of course, they, they do do some weird detail stuff. Um, but again, I'd love to know what you guys think about this. And somebody try to actually figure out like uh, the words, all the words, like try to translate them somehow. Like some people actually try to figure the shit out. Um, but it is, it is a little bit hard to like, to do, I guess. It's got to be a little bit harder to actually figure it out and do it. Um, but somebody try to actually translate some of this stuff uh, to figure out if there's any connection between the words. But it, again, it's very hard to like find any proper connection between any of them. So we're going to leave that one. Next up, we're going to talk about a little bit about Mega Evolution. So this is a bit of a uh, cool concept by Helio. He made a uh, an idea of like basically a Collosion and Polion, which is water fighting uh, with its hidden ability Defiant, boosting this Pokemon's attack stats sharply when its stats are lowered and basically making it into almost like a Spartan warrior, I would say. But almost like a Spartan warrior. Um, and then Sol actually says, if Snivy and Scorbunny are in the mix, I don't even know if, it, if I'd even use it, but man, it's too good. Honestly, actually getting uh, those three as our PLZA starters sounds too good to be true. If it happens, though, I'm really going to have a hard time choosing one. Now, the thing is, we did have hints. We have things that have actually pointed in the direction of what the starters will be. I think the biggest one, of course, was like that um, potential hint that we saw. But again, even that one isn't actually confirmed, by the way. Like, there's, there's no guarantees any of that stuff is confirmed. Um, so we're going to leave it at that. But there's actually a cool one right here from Soul says, it's insane that this was actually a hint to Game Freak's next Pokemon game all along. I mean, Greninja's line in what seems to be a very old-timey Japanese Hisuian setting, Kalos plus Hisui equals Legends EA. Um, I don't know if that's what it says right here, but, I mean, fair enough. Uh, <laughs> but again, yeah, like, we do see, like, you know, Literally Greninja, and then what seems to be like an old mountain, like Mount Coronet or something. Um, and then here he says, let it be known that if we do get Black and White remakes later this year, uh, that it would be all uh, all but confirmed to me that Game Freak intentionally left these two hints to the next two Pokemon games, not only in the BB, uh, BB League club room, but also in the soundtrack um, CD collection where this concept art is coming from. However, for now, we can confirm this theory, and all the Black and White connections could simply stay references to the BB, uh, the BB League being in Unova. Which, of course, is possible, right? But we do have all these pictures, right? Like, all these little, like, references and connections and stuff with the starters and, and everything. Like, oh, man. I don't know. This is kind of nuts, man. It's kind of nuts. Uh, but, yeah. Pretty great scans. Pretty great, like, little little thing to share. I just thought I would include it in the video because I think it's actually pretty fun. But uh, it doesn't really end there, though. Uh, of course, we already talked about this. I think one of you, one of my viewers, actually, you guys discovered this first uh, about the logo that has a little bit of red and a little bit of blue in it if you actually look at the edges of it. Um, and Joe said that, you know, the fact that there's, you know, the dash and the logo for Scarlet Legends EA has a tiny blue and red hint is intriguing. Um... And then Soul had to say, yeah, I know some days I want to give up uh, looking for breadcrumbs and hints left by Game Freak for us to find. But then I remember some uh, someone had to intentionally put those two tiny slivers of color here. Cheeky. Yes. Yeah, so, again, those could be hints, like we said, to Zygarde and Xerneas. Those are most likely the possibilities of what it could be hinting at. Um, but I don't know. It's intriguing. And also, Jordan shares the fact that if you actually look at, you know, previous games, he says, you mean ZA uh, specifically because you and I both know damn well that they put references to future games in their games. So, of course, here, you know, Omega Ruby have Sapphire. You had the, the, the blue and the yellow on the, on the stuff and, like, the, the giant, uh, you know, palm tree that looked like uh, none else than, uh, you know, Alolan Executor, which hinted at Sun and Moon. 
the flowers that were scarlet. I think these were scarlet and violet flavor, uh, f uh, like colored ones. And you had them in Legends RCS as well, like scarlet and violet colored uh, flowers. So yeah, they do leave hints. They do leave hints. It's just weird because the X and like this is the problem with the X, like the uh, the black and white hints. They were too obvious. Like they literally felt too obvious in some sense. Like that's kind of what ruined them in a way. I would say, but. Nonetheless, moving on. Another thing about uh, Gen 6 Pokemon, and this actually starts from, um, you know, uh, a post here saying, can we talk about Kalos uh, having by far the, f uh, the far the fewest Pokemon of any region that were brand new? Yes. Uh, but he says here, another thing about Gen 6 Pokemon is that it's the only gen that is missing a sub-legendary trio. Galar had a mix of the regional uh, regional form birds and then new Regis and horses. How cool, cool would it be for Legend ZA introducing three to four brand new legendary Pokemon as Kalos long lost sub-legendary trio? I think that'd be cool, man. They haven't actually done that, so I think it'd be a right about the time to, for them to actually do it. Like, it seems like the right time to go out, go out and create that. Um, next up, though, guys, Pokemon Go Fest, for those of you into Pokemon Go, has been announced. Uh, Go Fest in Madrid uh, is going to be taking place between uh, the 14th and 16th of June of this year, as far as I'm aware. Um, that's going to be an epic time. Uh, they also announced some other stuff, but yeah. GoFest is going to be coming out. Marsh Shadow is going to be one of the Pokemon available. Uh, but yeah, if you guys are going, let me know. I know one of my friends, uh, Novo Jiro, is going. So uh, good luck to him. I hope he has fun there. Uh, moving on to the next thing, though. We do have a bit of a, um, a trademark. We have a new trademark uh, coming out. And it specifically seems to be for Pokemon TCG Pocket. Now, if you guys don't know TCG Pocket, it's another game that was announced alongside uh, Legends EA. But... I feel like most people have forgotten about it because of the fact that we've been talking so much more about Legends, uh, Legends, you know, ZA. Uh, but everybody forgot about this one. But yes, Pokemon, uh, you know, trading card game Pocket is actually still coming out this year uh, in 2024 to iOS and Android devices. Um, in this game, the thing with this game is it's going to be some like a Pokemon trading card game on your phone. Kind of like Go, I guess, in some way, because, you know, it's going to be a lot about just, you know, spending money. Let's be honest, okay? Uh, but it seems like they have trademarked some terms, like immersive card is one of the terms that they have trademarked, uh, which is supposed to cover, like, the, these, like, um, these new immersive cards that are going to be in the game. So, again, interesting to see that they're going to be doing this. Uh, are you guys excited for this game? I don't know. I'm going to be covering it, when it once it does release or when any updates do come out. And I might do a whole breakdown video on this uh, because not a lot of people have talked about it. So I think it would be a worthwhile thing to do. Um, but for now, I'm going to move on to the next thing. And this is a post by none else site, My Nintendo News. But they're sharing something interesting. Apparently, Pioro. Now, if you guys don't know who Pioro is, he's a legitimate, actual, proper leaker. And while Pioro implied that Mario 10, or the, I guess, celebration, uh, we'll, we'll be actually seeing Nintendo share Paper Mario and Luigi's Mansion 2 info. And this was posted before he announced this, by the way. Uh, on the 4th of March, he posted this. Um, and basically, he said that uh, the prominent uh, leaker, uh, Pioro, is hinting that we could get more information about Paper Mario, the Thousand Year Door remake, and Luigi's Mansion 2 on March 10th, which is Mario, uh, Mario Day, right? Now, we haven't heard much about either title as of late, so March 10th uh, would be the ideal time uh, for them to divulge more. Nintendo has yet to announce its plans for this year's Mario 10 day. Well, he actually tweeted out saying, uh, you know, March 10, uh, March, uh, March, Mario Day, sorry, falls on Sunday this year, but um, it says also this one. So he shared a picture of uh, basically Paper Mario, the Thousand Year Door, and also Luigi's Mansion. So basically, he was confirming that. And interestingly, shortly after he said this, they did announce the actual, you know, uh, he did. They, they did actually announce the Mario Day. So the reason I'm bringing this up is not about Mario because I know you guys don't care about Mario. That's not your interest. You don't care about that. It's because of a different thing that this man tweeted. So if we go back here and we scroll down a little bit, right? So he said this, right? He tweeted this out, and guess what? They announced that you know that Mario Day that is actually have has been announced now. But the thing about him is he tweeted out some other stuff, right? He basically made hints towards like the new Nintendo Direct that was coming out in uh, in. I think it was the beginning of, um, of February, like, sorry, middle of February, right? Now, he hinted at that and said every partner is here, and he actually confirmed that there was going to be that new game, like, I forget what it's called, like, Endless Ocean or whatever. He confirmed that. He already hinted at that. And even the Monkey Ball game, he even, like, leaked that. However, something else that he tweeted out, which was very interesting to me, um, was specifically something else, which is, is Game Freak a partner? Yes, it is. He was hinting at Game Freak, but that wasn't all. He also made a tweet where he replied to someone, and somebody asked him, what do you know about the Pokemon Presents? And his reply was more or less, oh, I've heard about something black and white related, but that was sometime last year, so I don't know actually what's happening anymore. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't have context. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit weird. Uh, he basically talked about black and white. So I'm going to just do this again. I'm going to say it again, and I've said it before. There's still a chance... We might get another game announcement this year. The last potential chance that could be for, for that to happen is 
June. If it doesn't happen in June, it's not happening at all. If we don't get a Pokemon Presents in May or June, we're not getting anything else new this year. And the only thing we can expect, of course, is going to be Pokemon Trading Card Game Pocket this year. And then next year, whatever time, we don't even know when, uh, we're going to see the next thing. Now, before we continue, the last thing I want to talk about is specifically this little fun shitpost. Now, this is a shitpost, I know, by, uh, you know, Pokemon Legend shitpost. But I think it's funny nonetheless. I'm actually going to give him a follow. Uh, but the funny, though, is that the shape of Team Flare actually kind of looks like the shape of Clive's hair. I just thought it was fun to mention. I thought it was goofy. I wanted to share it with you guys to see what you guys think about it. Let me know in the comment section down below. But that is pretty much, um, you know, that's pretty much it. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video, guys. I'll see you on the next one. Peace out and bye-bye, ladies and gentlemen.